It's Swami time. It's Swami time. It's Swami time. Hey, Family Feud. Um, coming at you week two. Going to put together a little quick video here this morning. Um, no, it's a little bit late, but got a few things going this week, obviously, with work. But it's also Commission Crush's 20th wedding anniversary. Um, here in the back. So, heading out for Sedona this morning. Uh, Going to spend a few days off up in the mountains, try to cool down, rest, relax, celebrate 20 years of wonderful marriage. Um, talking about this week, tumultuous week two in the commission office, obviously. Um, lots of mistakes putting together waiver wire, uh, lots of mistakes putting together ad drops, um, dates. Honestly, I apologize. I just got confused. Um, Working on East Coast time zone is all it allows you to put into the computer. You know, we have most of our players in Central Time. I'm here on Pacific Time, which also is sometimes Mountain Time and goes back and forth. And honestly, just got confused trying to make the times fair and equal uh, for everybody. So hopefully we can get past that. Um, we got week one in the books. Uh, moving on to week two. Um, just going to go out and throw out some quick picks. Say hi, Crush. Hi. Um, so let's get right to it this week. All right, first game of the week is, let's go Young Guns versus Boats and Hoes. Okay, so in this first game, um, both 0-1 teams. We didn't expect that. You got the defending champ. You got the guy with probably had the consensus best draft. But hey, that's why we play the games, right? They both come in 0-1. They don't want to start 0-2. Um, you know, Young Guns is off to a, a rough start. Derrick Henry doesn't look himself with Tennessee. He's got a tough matchup against Seattle this week. Um, he's had injuries galore in training camp, and he gets more injuries in the first week. So he's throwing in Jamal Williams from Detroit. Who knows? He may get most of the carries with Swift being hurt, but they do go up against an absolutely pissed-off Green Bay team So at Green Bay. Who knows? Um, Young Guns might have a little bit of work to do. Boats, off to a slow start as well. I mean, he, he, his team had tough matchups all across the board week one. Um, and his players had a high usage rate. But Zeke looks like he might be in a passing offense. Um, Damian Harris, that offense is plotting in New England. Um, Najee Harris, Pittsburgh had trouble getting things going. You know, he's got some – Kittle didn't do much week one. He's got some bright spots with DeAndre Hopkins, obviously, and Justin Herbert. So we'll see what comes out this week of it. Uh, as far as this week goes, I just like Boat's lineup better. I think he's got a lot of players that got a lot of usage that uh, could make a splash this week. So uh, for that game right there, we are going to say Boat's and Hose. Boat's and Hose by six. All right, in our next game, this is two heavy hitters here going at it. Dreadheads at Durte. Um you know, Durte, we're, that's, we're not going to beat that dead horse. We're glad he's back. His team is smoking. And with the addition of Jalen Hurts and dropping Zach Wilson, I am here to say that this is the team to beat. Christian McCaffrey, number one running back. Tyreek Hill, number one wide receiver. DeAndre Swift, explosive if he can stay healthy. Mark Ingram, going to get volume in Houston. And Jalen Hurts looks like, you know, Vic 2.0 right now at this point. The guy's dealing. He's throwing the ball well. He's working within the offense. Plus, he gets you 50, 60, 70 yards rushing. It's it's perfection at fantasy quarterback. So, Durte is back, guys. Now, he's going to definitely have to navigate injuries and bye weeks because he's got absolutely nothing on the bench. So, if you're going to get him, you better hope that you get him on one of those weeks. Dreadheads, hey, his first week was absolutely atrocious. But a lot of that is product because he's got a lot riding in Green Bay. And, you know, we know what happened there. They got drummed 38-3. How do you fix getting drummed by 38-3? Well, you go back home to Green Bay and you have Detroit come to town, which is what's happening. He's got Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Jones both um, going against the hapless Detroit Lions. I think they have a monster game, both of them. Nick Chubb. Great running back, great R RB1. Antonio Brown, hey man, he looks like the old Antonio Brown, and Brady is looking for him. 
That's a he's locked in as a wide receiver one. And then he's got Ridley, who's going to probably be playing from behind against Tampa. He's going to get some volume. He's already thrown up 22.5 with Terry McLaurin. Scary Terry is, you know, the best not talked about receiver in the league. And then the, the TJ Hawkinson pickup solidifies him at tight end, which I thought was his only weak spot. So he looks absolutely locked in this week. Um, as good as Durte is, and as good as his team looks, this might be the week that Dreads puts it together after a poor performance last week, and I like his lineup, and I think that Dreads does clip him and knock him off. So we're going to go with Dreadheads by three. In our third game, which can only be described as the Catfight Bowl forever and ever. The Catfight Bowl, Rebel Scum at Orange Crush, our two female competitors, going at it for the first time. Uh, Scum starts off, has two players already. Saquon has already played. Logan Thomas has played. N- neither did too much, but she um, got out to a little bit of lead. I'm sorry, Antonio Gibson has also played. So, um, that, respectable, but nothing to, no splash plays out of those three. So, she's off to a, a tough start. And um, Russell Wilson at her quarterback looks great. Always a solid option. Uh, Antonio Gibson just hasn't gotten off yet. The, the, he looks good. Um, I think his usage is going to be fine going forward. He just, they're not throwing him the ball enough. J.D. McKissick is taken away from him a little bit. Um, they, they expected his role to expand in the passing game this year, and it just hasn't happened so far. Um, but, you know, he had 15 touches. He just hadn't found the end zone yet. I think he'll get going. David Montgomery looks great. Um, I think he's picking right up where he left off. And Saquon looked better in, in week two, so... She's got some things looking good going forward. It just might be tough for her this week. I don't love Randall Cobb um, as her wide receiver, too. Um, so may have to really keep an eye on him and see what he does. But Justin Jefferson should be fine going forward. Um, look, Scum, Scum just looks like she has a little bit of work to do. Crush, lineup looks pretty good. She did some work on it this week. You know, she made a lot of moves that looked like lateral moves. I didn't see her going up, but I do like the Kenyon Drake pickup. For her, um, DK Metcalf and Devontae Adams should both have big weeks this week. I think I think they bounce back from mediocre performances in Week One. Dak looks locked in as QB one for her. Um, so I like her lineup. I think Edwards Hilaire looks a little bit better this year. So in the first cat fight bowl, we're going to say Orange Crush by seven. And in the game of the week. We got Taylor's Tenacious Terriers at the Nerd Puppets. Uh, a couple reasons this is game of the week. This in honor of Oklahoma Nebraska weekend. You know what better game of the week matchup can we have than the Triple T's at the Nerd Puppets? Hey, both teams come in riding high on one and zero starts. Both scored high. Both teams look solid top to bottom. And you know even if it wasn't. Nebraska, Oklahoma week. This would be a great game of the week because these two teams are good. Um, Nerd Puppets, everything flows through Patrick Mahomes. You know, he's locked in. Um, the guy is just unbelievable. What a what a luxury to roll him out as your quarterback. Uh, I was joking with Schwichtenberg about starting Melvin Gordon against me because it seems like he started Melvin Gordon against me for the last 13 years every time that we've played. Um, but, hey. Long touchdown last week. Great start. Gets an absolute plus matchup against Jacksonville this week. Why not? Um, he will seed some carries to Javante Williams there. But, you know, there's, I think, enough mouths to feed there with Jacksonville. Um, Kareem Hunt, they're going to be absolutely smashing Houston this week. I see tons of second-half work for Kareem Hunt. And Chase Edmond looks quick and fast in that Arizona offense. So those, those three running backs are good. Mari Cooper, going to be – that Dallas and Chargers game might be 45 to 44. There's going to be tons of fantasy points that come out of that game, so Cooper's going to be great. And Jamar Chase, through all the talk of him not being able to catch the ball, hey, what's he do the first week? Catches the ball. Long touchdown, great week. And Darren Waller, my God, 19 targets in the first week. Now he does get Pittsburgh this week. I expect Pittsburgh to put the locks on them. The Las Vegas is on a quick turnaround and heading east. That's a tough spot for them, but still, Darren Waller's matchup proof. Turning to the Triple T's, 
Uh, Josh Allen didn't have a great week, you know, up against Pittsburgh, but hell, 270 yards passing um, and another, you know, 44 rushing. It's nothing to sneeze at. If that's your down week, we'll take it. Uh, Dalvin Cook locked in as the uh, running back one for him. Uh, Chris Car- Carson, real pleasant surprise. He looked like a beast in week one, and they fed him the football. And this week, Rashad Penny's hurt, so he may get even more uh, this week. Miles Sanders was a really pleasant surprise for the commish. Um, that Philadelphia offense is better than advertised, and Miles Sanders looks like the bell cow there. Uh, he, he gives up some downs to gain well, but um, all in all, really great opening week for Miles Sanders. Cooper Cup in that Rams offense, he is the legit number one there. Robert Woods is going to get his, but it looks like Stafford is locked down to Cooper Cup. Debo Samuel, cra- Debo Samuel cracks the lineup this week after an absolutely monster, monster week one. Uh, Triple T is weighing back and forth between starting Deontay Johnson and Debo Samuel because Deontay Johnson is a target monster with, you know, 10 targets a game. And Jalen Waddle looked good too, but... Debo Samuel's going to get the nod this week with Philly coming to town, hoping for a high-scoring game there and for touchdown touchdown upside with Debo. Kyle Pitts, not a terrible debut, not a great debut, just five points out of him, but uh, we're expecting more things from him going forward. So great game, uh, game of the week. I think it's going to be a good one. Um, going to give the nod to Triple T's this week. I think top to bottom he looks strong this week, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring, really, really, really close game. Uh, could go either way, but uh, close one goes to Triple T's in the game of the week by a point and a half. So, appreciate it, everybody. I'm going to upload this. We're going to hit the road. Love everyone. Hope you have a great weekend, and uh, stay involved. Kamish is out! In our second contest, we've got Raging Rabbis against Sam Houston's Hellraisers, both coming off big victories in week one. Um, high scoring affairs. Uh, don't look now, but Rabbi's lineup is dynamite. Um, Kyler Murray looks like the best player in fantasy football. Joe Mixon might have finally arrived. Alvin Kamara is still Alvin Kamara. Keenan Allen gets the ball a ton, even though he has, you know, he's not crazy explosive. He, his floor is just so dang high. Uh, Adam Thielen, all he does is score touchdowns. And looky here, Deontay Harris. Rabbi finally takes out tight end out of his flex, puts in a wide receiver. Lo and behold, it's a New Orleans Saints player, Deontay Harris. He only saw two targets in the first week. Caught them both, caught a long touchdown pass. So, boomer bust play there. And Mark Andrews is the security blanket for um, Lamar Jackson. Speaking of Lamar Jackson... Sam Houston counters with Lamar Jackson in a, I, th- I call it a plus matchup against Kansas City on Sunday night. Uh, Austin Eckler, you know, not a great week, but a solid week. And shockingly, Austin Eckler didn't get a single target out of the backfield. I don't know if that will ever happen again. Daryl Henderson looks great. Um, I, I really, CeeDee Lamb looks like, you know, the most electric receiver in the league. This is going to be a fantastic game between these two. Um, it's so hard to pick. Going to flip a coin. Um, Sam Houston, I think, is stronger top to bottom. It's a tough one to pick. I'm going to go Sam Houston by half a point. Wouldn't surprise me if it went the other way. But Sam Houston by half. <laughs>